two. Welcome back, WNST, Taos in Baltimore, and WNST.net. I think we're going to run this at 78 speed. Like the Let's old, go. We're going to put we it on. Because we got to go. He's been so, looking West, up quotes from Wes Moore. Wes has here. been so generous with his time. His staff's going to kill us. His wife's going to kill us. I'm sorry. He's on his way. He All will good. be there Evan for dinner. Evan sent his family home with some food. <laughs> West Baltimore love. Wes Moore is here with us. Right. Baltimore positive. We're at State Fair. This right, is the 78 ahead. version. In your op-ed back in September, you wrote there was an end to one of the paragraphs. I read it three times, mm. and I thought, wow. You said, I have come to understand, and I often tell young people mm. that you belong in every space that you are in, and that space would be incomplete without you. Yes. I think you're talking about Bianca at yeah, that point. Yes, yes. But yes. tell us what that means and how you came to that realization. You know, I, I think it's because for a lot of people, they, they fall into this idea of, of, like, it's the imposter syndrome. That where I am, it's like, I, I'm not where I belong, or it's an accident, or, or I'm there because it was a mistake that I'm here. Or you're searching for the next thing. You are. That the next thing's going to be better than this thing. And for The many grass of us, is greener, right? Yeah. There you go, right? And, and for many of us, we are in places that it's not even that our families have never been. Our families didn't even know to dream about it. Like, I, I find myself walking around rooms and being in places and spaces that it's not even just that I'm the first one in my family to be there. I'm the first one in my family to know that place even existed. And so... Well, I've seen where your mother grew up. I'm assuming they barely had running water. <laughs> no, like, that's right. No, so literally like, in the mountains. This is real. I've been to that part of this the This is real. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's your mother. That's once that's removed. Exactly that's right. it. That, and you can imagine what her mother's expectations in the yes. 1930s in exactly. Jamaica were, right? And so there's this idea... So, so We've come a hell of a long way. We have. That Jetson stuff we saw where kids were <laughs> yeah, doing it. This yeah. is real. <laughs> it, it, it really it's is real. incredible. <laughs> but it's one of these things where I think when you end up in those spaces, you, you, you can take on and interpret this idea that you're there because of like someone's benevolence or somebody's kindness or because it's a social experiment or whatever the case is. And what I want all of our kids to know what I want Bianca the young the young woman right. who was in Bridget to you who I highlighted in the op-ed what I wanted her to know thank you so much what I wanted her to know is Bianca you are never in a room that you don't belong in right you're never in a room that 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 your voice is not necessary and tell folks tell folks I, I, I love putting a face on it yeah tell them about Bianca because oh, when I read her. it I could see her man I yes. could feel her I could just it was real. Uh, so this is a young woman when we first started Bridge to You. So Bridge to You uh, started, started in, uh, in 2000 and 2014. Um, and it really was a platform to help assist Baltimore uh, students who were really the first ones in their family, first generation who were making this transition to higher education. Because we started noticing that when you're looking at the challenges for so many students who are transitioning on, it wasn't just that college was too expensive. It was all the other stuff. It was childcare. It was transportation. It was getting the right guidance counselor, picking the right courses. And so, because their parents don't know anything about how to right. get them into college, they they need professional help. Absolutely, and, 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 and by, by definition, for these first generation students, who are they turning to? And particularly when you're looking at guidance counselors. So, on average, and across the United States, it's 476 kids per guidance counselor in the U.S. So mm -hmm. per, about right. guidance counselors are then helping these students, men who are first generation, trying to make the transition. And the guidance counselors, it's not that they're not good. They're overwhelmed. 476 kids per guidance counselor average in the U.S. Not all turn out as well as I do for <laughs> bowling. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have a good guidance counselor. <laughs> you had Superman as a guidance counselor. That's the difference. Got me into <laughs> journalism <laughs> class. Man, now I'm an enemy so, of the people. So you've got, you've got Bridge EDU. Yeah. You, and, and, and before we give you, and, and I know you do have to run, but I, wa I, I want you to sing the praises of Robin Hood because I'm blown yeah. away by its stats. But one of the things you pointed out about Bridge EDU was that very often it were, were tra they were transition issues that we don't think of. Yes. Child care, yes. mentoring. Talk about that component yes. of Bridge EDU. Because, and, and we really focused on that because it, it, was, it was about understanding what the students are telling you. You know, I, I'm a big believer in this idea that the people who are closest to the challenge are going to be the ones who are closest to the solutions. And oftentimes we come up with solutions for kids or we come up with solutions for people in neighborhoods based on what we think or based on what a white paper says, or based on what, a, what an op-ed says. And the answer is with them if we only just look to ask. And so we spent time 
with our students. We spent time with our scholars and they were very free and clear with the biggest challenges that they were facing. And oftentimes it wasn't the challenges that we thought. It was things like, you know, if, if a car breaks down, for some students, that's a problem. For some students, it's existential. If a child, if, if, if Bianca, who has, you know, has a beautiful child, but when she's a junior in high school, if Bianca, as she's trying to make this transition into higher education, if she doesn't have a plan for childcare, guess who's not going to college? And so these are things that we have to be able to factor in and play into these conversations when it comes to really helping students and really helping them to transition into higher education and getting them the credentials and the degrees and the, and the certifications that they need in order to actually sustainably lift themselves. Now she's over copping. And, uh, exactly. That's happy my end. partner, yes. Cop, Cop, and we got the games on, yes. by the way. So Doing we are the Cop again today. Did extremely well yes. and, and a success story. That's right. With Through a, little a lot of, of hard work and a little bit little of help. A little bit of help. All right, Robin Hood, I know we're on a, I, I did. We did all the research. It's You've been there for several years. Yeah. It's, by all accounts, maybe one of the most successful nonprofits yeah. in the nation. With, with, with an amazing focus. Yeah. Poverty, poverty in New York City. People just want to throw their hands up and say, poverty in New York City? Yeah. Tell us about Robin Hood. Well, so, you know, Robin Hood started about 30 years ago, and it started uh, 32 years ago now. It started with a group of people who said, you know, we think this is, and they're in the finance industry. And they said, we think this is going to be a complicated time in the finance industry, and we thought a recession was going to hit. This was 1988. But they said, but you know who this is really, this time is really going to be hard on? People who are already living in poverty. Because for them, every year is a bad year. And so they started this foundation called Robin Hood, where they said, we want to take resources and put them towards this issue, and we want to be able to use data. Because all these folks who first started off, these are data people. These are people who are in the markets. But they said, when we make investments in companies, we don't just look at you know, annual reports and the pictures. We look at the data. And they said, we want to do the same thing for the organizations we support. Robin Hood first started off making about $40,000 worth of uh, grants now. 30 years later, Robin Hood has given, out, given away uh, just shy of $4 billion, wow. all towards the poverty fight. And since I've become the CEO, there have been, been a couple big things that we've been pushing on, uh, one of which has been expanding out of, of New York. In fact, uh, we may be making our first investments out here, right here in Baltimore. Uh, you know, because it was one of the big things that I pushed on when I became the CEO of Robin Hood. I said, you know, poverty is not a New York issue. So uh, what are you investing on in, in, in Baltimore? Yeah, Since so we have a Baltimore focus, talk about your Baltimore investment yeah. thing. So Other than just living here. Right. You know. That's right. I was right. like, there's right. no way I'm, I'm going to be in Baltimore and live here and not invest here. <laughs> uh, but, you know, but a lot of it is we, 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 we also changed the shift in a focus to go from this idea of poverty alleviation to now looking at sustainable economic mobility. And there's a difference. Poverty, a poverty alleviation for me is, is are we making poverty more tolerable? I'm not interested in making poverty more tolerable. I'm interested in moving people out because poverty is hard and it is traumatic and it is ugly and it is nasty. The other Westmore. It is the other. It, it, is, it, is, it is the way that poverty touches you in every single way. And so when people say, well, you know, is the way to solve it, is it education? Is it transportation? Is it housing? Is it mental health? Is it criminal justice reform? Is all stuff. The answer when it comes to poverty is yes. Because poverty shows itself in all these different ways when it comes to the way people are existing and the way people are living. And so at Robin Hood, really what we do is we invest in all of those things. You know, we invest in education. We invest in schools, in the creation of schools, in the creation of teacher training. We do invest in infrastructure. We invest in housing, both supportive housing and sustainable housing. We do invest in mental health. We do invest in reentry, both for veterans and also for people who are reentering from prison. We do invest in policy. One of the big things that I've been pushing since I've been the CEO is we've now built out an entire policy wing to Robin Hood because, you know, Dr. King actually said a great quote when he said, philanthropy is commendable, but the philanthropists can never forget the economic injustice that makes philanthropy necessary. And so we have to understand the reason that we have so much inequity in our society is not because philanthropy hasn't done its job. We have policies that are putting people and keeping people in poverty. So our job as a philanthropic unit is to make sure we're using every tool in our toolkit. You know, it goes back to this idea about, about you know, talking about what are some of the things I learned from, from the military. You asked a great question. You know, one of the things I learned from the military is we take no option off the table. And when you're in war, the answer is I plan on winning that war, which means nothing gets taken off the table when it comes to options that we will deploy. 
Well, if we're in a war, in, war on poverty, why should that be any different? Well, it's, it's That's the what we're talking about with Kerwin, right? And like, it's, it's, it's the Kerwin it's question. It's too much it's, money. It's, no, it's, what, 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 what do you mean? Too much money for what? For what? Like, for it's what? it's for the what? thread question that we've asked over and over. Sarah has data to show that 537 children have had their lives changed. That's no right. one's left the program. Everyone's gone to college. Right. So Nestor and I turn to one another and say, why aren't we making massive investments Amen. Amen. in thread then? Amen. We know this is transformational. Correct. All right, I know you got to run. Before you do, uh, I'm going to ask you again. I know you were answer. a tree. What kind of? No, no, no. Oh, this is bigger than that. He knows what I'm going to ask. He's been asked before. <laughs> I, I assume this answer is the same. You're not going to run for mayor. I'm not going to run for mayor. <laughs> You've I'm been asked mayor. over and over and over. I, uh, what is it about uh, elective office that, because you'd be, you know, and I'm not just blowing smoke at you. Yeah. You'd be phenomenal. Told you that several years ago when you and my friend Kevin Kamen had sat yes, down. Yes, yes. Um, why man. won't you do it? Um, I, I'm not saying that I, I won't ever, because I have a deep amount of respect of, of the role that elected officials play in our society. Um, you know, they, they help to control the conversation. They help to control the budgets. Uh, you know, so much of our lives are determined by the people who are sitting in these seats. Um, I'm just a, I, I'm, I'm not a person who believes in, in going after a specific title or a specific role. You know, when, when, when I, when I'm done... When my heart stops, the thing that I want people to say, uh, well, I want people to say about me more than anything else is he was useful. He gave it all for a cause he believed in. I believe that my ability to give it all for a cause I believe in does not have to be restricted to a specific title. And I know people that have, you know, no titles at all that are changing our world every single day. And I know people... <laughs> I know people with really big titles, like your friend, and you really people with really, really big titles who are doing absolutely nothing with them. All right. We, we're we're not so going to let you get at we're, 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 we're moving around. <laughs> what, what kind of damage? Uh, we're going to make Nestor happy. What kind of damage are we doing, Wes, and how will we overcome what's happening at 1600? How long term? I have term? a hard time. I understand with the military How, how long term? I have a, every week I watch this. Yeah. I watch the flag. I watch them salute military people, and I think – what have we done to make this the leader of, your, uh, of all of our freedom? And what's the long-term damage? Give us, give us your view because you're so insightful. As I said in Nestor, sometimes I just feel like I want to pull the covers over my head. I know. Give us, give us from your view. How do we get past this? Um, the, the thing that I ask, though, is that we can't. Um, you know, I, I, I remember someone saying to me, they're like, you know, I, I swear I just want to just stop looking. And... My answer to that is this, though, is like, you know, because I, I, I see it with my, with my son. You know, my son is now six, where, you know, even when he was four and five, when he would, he would cover his eyes as if you couldn't see him. Right, right. Right? right? <laughs> um, we cannot cover our eyes to this. Then we this lose. This damage is real. Not only, not only do we lose, we are going to lose faster and bigger, and we cannot underestimate the pain that people are feeling while all this is happening. We have got to be engaged. We've got to be involved. I think about this work within Robinhood. Three years ago, three years ago, we didn't have a built-out policy wing within Robinhood, right? Three years ago, Robinhood was pretty exclusively focused on one geographic area. We've changed this. Three years ago, Robin didn't have the built-out partnerships that we've had. We changed it because that is, what the, that is what the defense is giving us, so we'll adapt to it. But also we've changed Lamar, it because I like that. That's, that's good. It. That's good. Look that's what the defense is giving you and adapt to it, right? right? There you go. Call an auto vote the line of scrimmage. But also remember, that's what our humanity is demanding. Our humanity right now is demanding that we do not just pull the covers over our, over our heads or cover our eyes. The truth is, is that we are here right now in the situations that we have, enjoying the liberties that we have, because people in really hard circumstances stuck their chest out, lifted their chins up, and said, let's go. And they did it with a complete level of uncertainty about whether they were going to win or not, because honestly, at that moment, it didn't matter. The, the thing that mattered was the fight. The thing that mattered was the fight was worth it. It's impossible to look at things that are going on right now and say that the fight is not worth it. The fight is worth it. Every single system is under attack. And what you stand for, what you believe in. That's it. That's it. Man, please. All right, thank you. Please. Uh, you, you've been awesome. Please come I, back. I, awesome. I give you the, I will. the long I will. parachute. Bring us the updates. I uh, will. 
I would love to. Keep up Y'all the great the best, work. Man. Go Robin Hood. Yes. Baltimore. If you don't feel Baltimore positive after this, go get your blood pressure taken. Right? <laughs> we are at State Fair. We're going to be back next week at Fabies with the Ruvik Naraj. We get all sorts of great stuff ahead. Uh, Martin O'Malley is going to be joining us. Commissioner Harrison is going to be joining us. Speaker of the House, Adrian Jones. Wes Moore, author, best-selling author out here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Nice. Thank you, guys. Signing off from Cadenzville right after Thank this. You. We are WNST.net, AM 1570 at WNST, Dallas and Baltimore. You're awesome, man. Thank you.